All right, well, as you may be able to tell from above me, I have a roof rack on the car and I've actually got a rack on the tailgate of the car as well. So one of the things that I really thought about a lot was once we got the seven passenger Model Y, what happens if you're using all the seats? I mean, you're going to be taking up quite a bit of that cargo space once those seats are up. Now, when they're down, you have roughly the same amount of space in the seven passenger car as you do in the five passenger. So as you've probably figured out by now, I had to come up with another way to get additional storage in the car without having a huge impact. And realistically, you have two options. Option number one, the most obvious is a roof rack. Now you see these roof racks on a number of cars across the globe, they're everywhere. And what's nice about them is they're easy to put on and they store a ton of stuff. Plus with the roof rack, unless you have a Model X, you can have that up there without impacting any of the doors. So it's up and out of the way. Now, this Thule box is a very popular model and it works really well. It actually attaches to the top of this car very nicely and it's not too long. So you can open the tailgate without any clearance issues. Of course, the doors. Now, if you have a Model X, this isn't gonna work for you because your Falcon doors are not gonna open with a roof rack. And don't forget when you get the roof box, you're also going to have to get those roof carrier bars from Tesla. So there's additional costs associated with that, but that does give you a lot of flexibility and the types of things you could mount to the top of the car, including perhaps a kayak. So that brings us to our other option. Now you've probably seen racks that hook up to a receiver on a car, whether it's at Walmart, the hardware store, AutoZone, whatever, they're everywhere. And they're a really good option for a lot of reasons. Now I came across X racks and they make these specifically for Tesla's. So they have one specifically for the X. They have one specifically for the three and specifically for the Y. I believe they even have one for the S, but what's nice about it is it's built specifically for a Tesla in mind, which means it's lightweight, high quality, and it's made to be able to store into the car when you're not using it. Now, of course, like many of you, the one thing I wanted to find out first and foremost, when you're talking about an electric car, range is king. So which of these two options is going to have the biggest impact? And more importantly, how much is that impact? Now, of course, when you put anything on the outside of this car, you are going to impact the efficiency of the car. And I don't need to teach you about physics that you can already kind of figure out. This roof rack is probably going to be the biggest hit on range. And that is indeed the case. But I wanted to see if we put the rack on the back, how much range would we lose and would it be significantly better than putting a box on top of the car? So here's what I set out to do. I set up a round trip 32 mile route and I set a baseline and then I put the rack on the back and then I put the box on the top and ran that route three different times just to get an idea of what the impact is. Now, I did not have climate control on. I drove 70 miles per hour in autopilot the whole time and the weather was between 50 and 55 degrees. Now there was a bit of a breeze today, so about 15 to 20 miles per hour, so that will have an impact as well, but really the temperature and that breeze is going to have the biggest impact for now. So as you get into the warmer months, it should be slightly more efficient than the numbers you're about to see. But with that said, here's where we ended. With the baseline at 32 miles, we did 275 watt hour per mile. Now, some simple math for you. This is based on the original version of the Model Y. There was roughly 72 kilowatt hours of usable energy in the pack. Now, these newer ones like the one I have have a little bit more available capacity in that battery pack. But for simple math, everything's going to be based on 72 usable energy. So here's how you do math in a theoretical 100% to zero charge. We are going to take 72 divided by 0 0.275. That gets us 261 miles of theoretical range if we were at 100% and drew it down to zero. So that's pretty consistent. Last year when I did a full range test on our original Model Y, I think we had 273 watt hour per mile at 70 miles per hour. It was a bit warmer out, so that's a good number for the baseline. Now first up was the X-Rack, and once you put this on, your car is going to recognize there is something near the bumper and I did get alerts from time to time saying I needed to clear off those sensors or I needed to have them replaced. So this is going to be an alert that's going to be on your screen. It will not chime at you and it's going to be there the whole time you're driving. Now, I was worried this was going to impact autopilot, but as it turns out, not only does autopilot still work, 
but some of the full self-driving features still work as well. So automatic lane changes, no problem, even with recognizing there's something right behind the car. So this does not impact, which is really important because if you're gonna put this on and go a thousand miles, you want autopilot to work. Now, when you do go in reverse, it is going to make all kinds of sounds and tell you to stop because it thinks you're gonna run into something. I think that goes without saying. In addition, one more point about this, I have yet to find a supercharging stall that I would not be able to back into, but I am confident there's at least a handful of them out there. And in that case, you would need to wait for that pull in slot to be able to plug in. All right, so here's the results with the X rack. We actually got 302 watt hour per mile. So again, that same math, 72 divided by 0.302 gives us 238 miles of range. That's a 10% decrease in efficiency and a loss of 23 miles of range. So that is a hit, although 10% to add additional cargo space in the back may be worth it, especially when we go to our next run, which was the roof box. So now when we had the roof box on, of course we didn't have any issues whatsoever. You do hear a bit of wind noise with that thing blaring in the wind, but it's not too bad. So here's the efficiency on that. We ended up getting 339 watt hour per mile. So again, 72 divided by 0.339. That gives us 212 miles of theoretical range, 100% to 0%. That's a 23% hit or the equivalent of 50 miles miles nearly on a full charge. That's a big hit. And when you're going a thousand miles, losing 50 miles of usable actual real world range, that is big. Now I do want you to keep in mind, this was a 70 mile an hour test run. So if you're going to drive any faster than that, this is exponential. So the faster you go, the more the impact is, and it is not linear. So the faster you go, the more the impact's going to be. Now with all that said, there are pros and cons to both of this. Obviously the rack cannot hold nearly as much as the roof box can. So you may only have a roof box as a choice. If you do go with the roof box, I recommend planning for driving a lot slower. That way the impact isn't so terrible that you're stopping every hour and a half. Now, if you get the X-Rack, you are going to have a hit, but it's not going to be so terrible that you're really going to have to stop so much more frequently. It is going to add charging time because you are going to go less on a charge. But again, it's not too terrible losing 10%. If you think about it this way, the original Model Y to the current Model Y, that battery pack change added five, roughly 5% 5 of battery density and range to the car. So you'd be losing half of that. So you would actually be slightly less than the original generation Model Y, but it wouldn't be a major hit. So the X-Rack is actually a really good option. And what I also got with this X-Rack was their weather liner. So this thing is solid. It's waterproof. It has a really nice thick material that appears to be very watertight. And I took the largest rolling suitcase that we have and I put it in there for size comparison. So you can get an idea of what all you could fit in this bag. Now you don't have to use the bag and you can stack more stuff back there if you don't use the bag. But with just the bag, this is what you're looking like for space. There's a little bit more space in there than in the absolute largest roller bag that we have. Now beyond that, of course, you can stack stuff on top of it. And it also comes with some really nice straps that hold it really securely to the vehicle. And as you can see, I had to loop these around a few times. So there's plenty of extra strap there so that you can stack things nicely. Now they do have some other features that are designed into this thing that are unique and I think add to a much more pleasurable experience. Now, the one that we got was specifically for the Y, of course, but we also got an attachment that we can put behind it. And because their rack has a receiver on the back of it, you can fit up to 100 pounds of additional stuff on the back, whether that's a bike with a rack. As long as it's less than 100 pounds, you're good to go. Now, I opted for their optional fishing pole holder, and it looks really cool, and it actually works really cool, too. So once we get to Florida, I'm very excited to put some nice fishing rods on there but pretty unique stuff you can also put all kinds of stuff on there it's got these channels built into it so that it can have accessories added or removed now you can also hook this directly to the car you don't have to hook it to the back of the x-rack which makes it very useful so once this is all there you're still going to have access to the back of your car you're still going to be able to charge in almost every situation there may be some caveats to that where there's a few stalls that are not going to let you back in enough to reach that cord but you'll have to use the pull forward 
station in that situation. So like many of you, you were probably wondering the same thing. What's the difference in impact by having the roof box? Is there a better alternative? And what is that going to look like if I'm thinking about a long road trip? I hope that this video was helpful in answering those questions for you. So I hope that you liked this video. And if you did, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.